So let's start with the Blue Beam sets. So this is my original set of drawings once I get them from the owner, right? I'm going to open up, and this is my workflow, um, just kind of step by step on how I do things in, in, in the field. So I open up the original set of drawings that I get from the owner. But the first thing I do is I go to document. I go to create uh, page labels. Uh, I'm going to do it by creating a, uh, by selecting a page region. Go to select. Then I'm going to draw a box around the, the sheet number. I usually like to put the job number first. So my project number is 219057. That is a space dash space. And you can see a preview here of what it's going to look like once you hit OK. Uh, so create the page labels. I'm going to say yes. I want you to create all uh, the page labels on all the drawings. I usually like to scroll through and make sure that my labeling came in right. Sometimes it doesn't. So you have to kind of audit it. But I like how they came, how they came in. I'm going to save that. And the next step will be to extract all the pages as single page PDFs because that's how the set is created. The set is composed of a single page PDF. So I go to documents, extract pages. The main thing here is make sure you have, um, of course, select all the pages and then make sure you have the this box checked, extract pages as separate files and then use page label to name the files, right? Click OK. So this is something else that I like to set up as well as I'm going is, or before I start, is to create my folder structure, right? So I have, so instead of this presentation main office, whatever, this is just for here, I usually, my folder, my main folder is called drawing management. In my drawing management, I have a sets folder. In that sets folder, I have my original documents that uh, that's what I use to create all my, the very first set of drawings that I get from the owner. Uh, my combined files, which are once I publish the latest and greatest set, I save it in here. My revisions and then anything else that I use to create the set. And I, you can just go 04, 05, 06 as you, as you need. So these are my original files. So I'm going to go to original documents, select that folder. Everything's being extracted. So if I go back to my original documents, you see it, ext it extracted all the pages as single page PDFs, right? So now I'm ready to build my set. I can close this because I don't need it anymore. Um, so this is the, um, the sets icon. If you don't have it, you can right click on the toolbar, click on show, and then just turn it off, turn it on, right? So you can turn it on and off. Okay, so, and you might have it on this side. You know, everyone has their Bluebeam um, kind of configured differently. So I have it on the right side, you might have it on the left side, or some people have it on the bottom. So this is where, where I have it. So I'm gonna go to sets. I'm gonna create a new set. So you can go into options, and there's different ways of how, you, how you're sorting um, your pages so you can show by file name and page label page label only file name only and i think they created this exactly for that reason because some industries are not allowed to change that right um, so you go through here and you kind of pick what caters to your um to your industry and then you can tell it sort by right same deal page label only file name page label uh, file name page index uh, so there's different options on how you create your set. I usually, I've, I have found that this is somewhat confusing, so I just leave it as is because I'm not required to uh, keep it the same. I'm just going to click uh, cancel. So now I'm going to add the uh, my files. This is the categories template, and I'll show you in a second what uh, the benefit of this is. So uh, since we're working on uh, Georgia DOT projects, um, I have my category set up already. So this means I have my Georgia DOT bookmarks set up and everything on the set is going to be, is going to drop under each category. So on the, the roadway, the drainage, the um, ITS, 
etc. Based on the sheet number, the A and B. Yes. Yes. So I created one, uh, the 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 template one. The standard one is construction, and that's what comes with the Bluebeam uh, once you buy it. I created the G one 2019, and these two are for uh, for a project in Nashville. Uh, so I'm going to use the G dot. Click OK. I'm going to create my. I'm going to go and pick my first. I usually like to bring it by different categories. So the cover page, uh, the roadway drawings, uh, section 13, and then the drainage, section 22. So I'm going to bring it in by different uh, sections and just for that, so they will drop exactly where I want them. Click OK. This is going to tell me, select the page region that contains the sheet name. Well, on this cover page, there's really no sheet name or not a sheet name that I like to uh, name it. So I'm going to say skip page. And then another one comes up, select the page region that contains the sheet number. So this is the sheet number here. Same deal, kind of like that's what I already did. Draw a box around it. It's going to think. And it's going to create the, um, the sheet number. I like the preview. I'm going to click OK. And then this box is going to come up. The sheet name, I can change it and have it be... Um, cover page and then this is where I kind of have to audit make sure that the um, sheet name sheet number came in correctly so you see it came in as a queue so I just uh, sometimes it comes in wrong so fix it there and then this is my revision uh, zero my original drawings and the other reason why I do the file name and page label at the very beginning is just to um, make sure that this 01001 kind of matches this the sheet number. Just kind of uh, uh, back checking yourself. That's the main reason why I do it. Click OK. It's applying the tags. Um, so it came in on the uh, template that I said, right? Right here on the right side. So the cover drawing is going to drop in the cover drawing uh, bookmark. I'm going to go and click here, add more drawings to the set. I'm going to pick my section 13, which are the roadway drawings. Again, it's going to tell me um, draw a box around the sheet name. The sheet name will be mainline plan. It's going to give me a preview. I like it. Click OK. Now it's going through and creating the tags. And then I have to do the sheet number. So I'm going to do select. Uh, sheet number is here. I like how it came in. Click OK. And then the same. So you go through and then you audit the sheet name, make sure everything came in right. Oops, something here did not come in right, so you uh, fix it. Same deal with the sheet number. So right here, I'm just going to fix these 13 dash, oops, that 014, 13. So the revision number is zero. The original drawings, click OK, and then I'm going to add the uh, the last section. So copy and paste all that, fix all the name, um, all the labeling, and then everything came in correct on the sheet number. Click OK. So now I created my set, right? Now we're going to go into once you get a revision. And this is the the, the, the template, right? This, these are the GDOT bookmarks. If I had not uh, picked that one template, that GDOT 2019 template, then all this will come in um, without a header. And so it's kind of hard if you have a thousand different uh, drawings, it's kind of hard to kind of sort through it, right? So that's that. Now I'm going to add... Let me save the set, save set. 
So all this BEX file is just a database. It's a database. Where it grabbed those drawings from. It doesn't have to be in the same folder. You could grab something from the folders. It knows where it came from and it's the latest grade. Yes, but if you move a file from that one folder, mm -hmm. or if you move a folder, then the links are broken. Right. right. right? So that's the main reason why I create uh, this folder structure. Because if I'm going to move my main folder, the then everything comes with it. it. All the relative links come with it. So if you move something, again, if you move something, then you're breaking the links. Right. And then you're, once you open up your set, it's going to tell you, hey, the links are broken. Um, we can't find this drawing. So I'm going to save. Uh, I just saved the set. Once you have a revision from the owner, so I'm going to open up the revisions. I do exactly the same thing. I create my page labels. Uh, document, uh, create page labels, page region, select. Two one nine zero five seven space this space. Okay, okay. Let's create in the page labels. So with the revision, I did the exact same thing, created the page labels, extract them as separate files. Uh, I'm, go I'm gonna start adding them into my set. So I went to um, add files to the set. And again, I, I like to pick it as different sections. So the, um, the revision is coming in, is adding the tags. I'm gonna, since this is the first page, I'm gonna skip it. So here you see that it actually came in down here at the bottom because I didn't have a cover page. Right, so revision one, and if I sort through this again. Right, so I have my cover page, revision zero, the original drawings, uh, cover page, revision number one. Click OK. And then this is the message that I've been saying. So these are my, my current files. This is my revised file. file. And then select OK to copy mark. So in case you had any markups on this old drawing and then you wanted to transfer the markups from the old to the new, uh, Bluebeam will automatically do that. So select OK to copy markups from the current pages to the revised pages and stamp the current pages that superseded. So you click OK. And then now you have, you can look at it, you can look at your set like this, or you can look at it like this. And the reason how you'll know you have a revised drawing is because of this arrow. So this right here is my latest. If I go back, this is my superseded, right? I'm going to add more. I'm, I'm going to, again, add these drawings to it. Okay, so yep, they came in already. So click OK. It's click OK. So again, the same window comes up. I'm going to select OK. It's replacing pages in there. So now I have revisions in my cover drawing, and then now I have revisions in here. Right. If I go here, then I have a few more in here. So the next step in my in my workflow is to add is to help the guys out in the field when they're looking at the iPads, right? So I'm going to go to this page 
and then I'm going to create the hyperlinks. So let's say this is drainage structure A19. I'm going to create a markup. I already have a markup created. Uh, P for profile drawings and then S for shop drawings, right? And then I'm going to cheat a little bit because I already know where structure A19 is. 22 007. So I'm going to open up um, where A19 is. I'm going to say, I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to click on the markup, right click on the markup. I'm going to say edit action. I'm going to say when I click on this markup, I want you to jump to 22-007, uh, which is where structure A19 is. Click OK. And then do the same thing, uh, actually do the same thing for the shop drawings. I'm just going to open up um, shop drawings. And I'm going to open up that A19 shop drawing, A19. Go back to it. Click on the uh, S on the markup. Right click, edit action. When I click on that markup, I want you to jump to shop drawing A19. Click OK. And now it, it creates this um, kind of like a lightning. Not sure what this is. Right. But if I just want to hide that lightning and then um, just once I hover on the markup and click on it, it'll take me straight to it. So if I, if I want to hide that, I usually go to documents and then just flatten the document. Make sure you uh, have allow markup recovery uh, check because if you don't, then it just flattens everything and then you cannot um, click on the markups again. So now those little icons went away. And then once I hover on the P, uh, let me close this so you guys can see it working. So uh, once I click on the P, then that um, the profile drawing comes up, profile drawing A19, same deal. When I click on the S, uh, shop drawing for structure A19 comes up, right? So this is, the main reason why I do this is for the guys in the field when they're going through their iPads, right? Um, so now we're going to, I believe, now we're going to publish. We're going to publish a set, and now this is going to become a PDF, right? The PDF that we're all used to. Right now is not a PDF. Right now is is the set, the .bex file. If I go to, I'm going to trick the system a little bit. Number one, I have to open up the sections that I want to uh, select. I'm going to trick the system a little bit and say print set and then say print latest revisions. What this is going to do, I'm going to uh, click cancel. And what this uh, just did is it selected my latest and greatest revision. It did not select any revisions in the, uh, in the past. Right, because I don't want to see any of that. They've been stamped and superseded. They're no longer good, so I don't want to see any of that. So I just selected the latest and greatest uh, revisions. Now I go back to sets. I go to publish. I go to combine. And then I just save it as a regular um, file, right? I'm going to call it latest and greatest or whatever you want to call it. Greatest. Save, click OK. I'm going to close this. And now my, my uh, PDF has been created. And if I go to that one that has the markup on it, and I click on the markup, it's going to take me to the profile drawing. And then if I go back and click on the other one, it's going to take me to, to the shop drawing. 